I'm in Bali, Indonesia. This is a place where remote workers and digital nomads come because it's cheap and incredibly beautiful. So today we're going to be walking around Changu and asking people around here what they do for a living. Uh, name, age, and what do you do for work? Uh, my name is Chris Morris and I'm 37 and I've been a personal trainer now for 12 years. I basically have a coaching program which is personalized training programs, nutrition advice and tailored nutrition coaching and the sport and accountability. So it's, it's sold as like a service. Um, it's like a 16 week coaching program. So what made you want to come to Bali? The lifestyle, like obviously I'm in, fit, in fitness. So the lifestyle here is pretty much health and fitness orientated. I don't know how long you've been here now, but there's so many good gyms. Everywhere you go, you can eat healthy food. Um, just a lot of people, just looking at people in general, being around health and fitness yeah. is, and Bali's very slow. It's like a slow life pace. The mornings here are very slow and it's just, there's not many aspects of Bali I don't like, but the biggest things is the health and fitness side. What's your daily routine look like here in Bali? So I am a routine structure guy. So I get up on the morning, I go to the coffee shop and work. Like my most productive hours of the day are between like eight and 12. So I get up on the morning, go to the coffee shop, work solidly eight till 12, have a coffee. Um, I tend to eat lunch at like 12ish, go to the gym at one, be there one till three. I don't know if you've been to many of the gyms here, but the recovery areas are epic. Like, so you spend an hour or whatever in the gym, and I tend to spend more time in the recovery areas and stuff after that. And it's really hard to get like steps in and walking around Bali. I don't know if you've noticed that yet, but yeah. every, on an evening, like 5, 30, 6 o'clock, I go to the beach and just walk for an hour at sunset. And then eat dinner somewhere. There's loads of cool places to eat dinner. And honestly, that's my life most days. How long have you been a digital nomad for? Full time two years. Yeah. I've been dipping me toe in for about five years, but I went full time two years back. Kind of COVID drove that for most people, I think. So did you find it hard to make that transition from, from working in person to doing everything online? As a business, yes. Me as a person, no. Like my skill set kind of, it just carries over on, uh, on online. I think once you've been an in-person personal trainer, online is just kind of a natural progression for a lot of people, but is trying to convince people that online coaching can be as good if not more beneficial for them than in-person coaching was the challenge with that so it was the business aspect rather than my own skill set how much do you think that somebody would have to make to come here full-time in bali and, and live as a digital nomad i think so i'm going to speak in british pounds here i think if you can earn 2000 uk pounds you can live here pretty comfortably per month i think rent and stuff here is getting close to european prices but everything from food, transport, things that you want to do here, like when I'm saying 2,000 a month as well, I eat out every day, pretty much most meals. Yeah. So that's living a decent life. I think the only thing that's getting close is the accommodation costs here now. And also gym prices. Gym prices are crazy here, yeah. but everything else is, is pretty much half price, I think. And if you're comfortable sharing, can you say how much your business makes? Yeah, so my business is currently around eight, nine K a month mark. And it's a two year old business? Yes, but do bear in mind I've been in the industry for 12 years. Mm. So there's been a lot of carryover from that. There's still a lot of people in Newcastle that I used to coach in person that I now coach online. So I'm not saying someone could get to that point within two years. Mm. I don't want to push that and say like, you can get to this point in two years if you're starting completely fresh as a personal trainer. But if you've got some gym experience, gym floor experience, and no reason why they can't. And to be honest, to get to 2K per month online as a coach, I don't know, you can do it in three or four months. What advice would you give to somebody who wants to become a digital nomad and, and move to a place like this? Um, first thing is do it. I think there's always, you can sit there and think of reasons why not to do anything in life. I think the financial pressure can be a good thing. Like you've known you have to earn a certain amount of money to live where you want to live putting yourself in that position can drive you as a person and drive your business forwards. So the first thing is put yourself in a position where you have financial pressure and you have to make it work for yourself. I don't kind of like it when people go dip one toe in and they're like, oh, well, I can go back home if this doesn't work because most people that do that end up back home and they'll end up in their parents' bedroom. I think a lot of people be digital nomads because of the lifestyle. I still think you need to pick something you're passionate about. It's really hard to go all in on a business and put as much effort as you need to into an online business because it's not easy if you're not passionate about it. Are you, do you come here solo? Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, I have loads of friends out here now. There is a lot of entrepreneurs out here. So you're always sitting next to someone else on a laptop and you end up getting chatting to whoever that person is and, and it kind of drives you a little bit more as well. Like you can come to Zinn, like we're sitting here in that back room up there. Everyone sits and works. And I was speaking of a guy the other day who was designing yachts on his laptop. Wow. That's literally what he's doing for a job. <laughs> literally designing yachts. And I was just like, who thought you could do that while living in Bali? Next up, we're at Tribal, a popular co-working cafe and hostel. Vianel from South Africa, I'm 26, and I'm a tax consultant working in Australia remotely. Oh, okay, so how'd you get into that? Uh, basically, so I qualified last year, I got my eight years of studies. I wanted a remote job, I wanted to travel simultaneously while working, so I applied. This tax consulting opportunity popped up, so yeah. Just signed up. How, how did you find the job? A lot of a lot of searching. So it took kind of like a half year, a lot of interviews. It was five, six interviews to get the job. Um, yeah, so it's an American company outsourcing South Africans, um, not to smoke my own pipe, but like finance specialists. Um, because I got that qualification, it's kind of employ employees for short-term basis um, to help other clients with that needs stuff. So I'm just on a client now for six months up until like my job is done. And then after the six months, I'll go to another client depending on where they place me in, or like on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, might be America if it's America, but it's all remote. So if it's in America, I'll probably go to Mexico or wherever. So what made you want to come to Bali? I just heard about this digital nomad thing. Um, saw the videos on YouTube. When I came over, it's kind of weird because it's a YouTube lifestyle in actual person. Like, I, th I don't know if it was um, bullshit, yeah. but it wasn't at all. Like, it's kind of what you see on YouTube is what you get. Is there anything surprising that uh, when, you, when you got here you weren't expecting? Or is there any, like, culture shocks about being in Bali? I gotta say, the first week was one of the biggest adapting times in my life. It, like, my mind was blown. I, didn't, I, thought, it, I thought it would be kind of like a honeymoon spot, which is not at all. Um, if I could describe that first week, it felt like a Hindu culture, which it is, with a bunch of basically models just that stay between them, <laughs> between the Hindus. Yeah. Yeah, which I wasn't expecting. I thought it, it was, it's, it's still a fairy tale. I'm still loving it, but um, it's not a honeymoon spot if you don't make it a honeymoon spot, which I wasn't expecting. Do you have any advice for somebody who wants to do something similar, wants to become a digital nomad and maybe they feel like they're stuck in their home country and they want to come somewhere like here and, and live this life? So I've only been doing it for two months now. And the thing is, back in South Africa, when I told my friends about this idea that I had, um, they kind of looked at me as if I was mad or like a crazy person. Like, you're going to this digital nomad YouTube type of lifestyle, but it might be all fake. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd, I'd say like I'd recommend whoever is wondering about it, just take that leap of faith and do it. Like it's, it's been so amazing. Are you willing to share how much you make with your job? So gross, I still get taxed on South African tax. So I gross like 3.5 thousand American dollars. And I net around 2.7 thousand per month. Per month. And you feel like you live comfortably off of that wage here? More than comfortably. Like I, I save up actually. I save up more than I stay in when I stay in Cape Town. It's just the getting here that's the initial yeah. splurging money. So it's kind of weird because I'm traveling, saving up. <laughs> yeah. Like I broke the rules or something. <laughs> <laughs> I go by Riv. Um, I'm 23 years old and I make TikToks for a living. What kind of TikToks do you make? I usually cook terribly and I try different recipes and vlog my day-to-day -day life. What made you want to get into that? I started last year in January knowing full-on that I wanted to make this my full-time career because there is nothing else I'd rather do with my time. Like I would always be either shooting on my camera or creating like mini vlogs for myself and I just knew I wanted it to be my full-time career. How quick was it from you starting to actually making income that you can sustain yourself with it? I started in January making my first ever vlog. I was, I knew it would take, I was like ready and so dedicated. Like if it took a year, it would take a year. I got really lucky and I got my following early on in March and I was so, so grateful for that. I didn't see my first dollar till June. Um, the same year and then from there on it became within two months it was becoming my full-time income. And can you say how much on a typical month you'd be making off TikTok? Yeah so um, off TikTok I'll make anywhere from 4,000 to 6,000 um, USD 
and then uh, another brand deal will like supplement anywhere from 4,000 to 10,000 USD. So if somebody wants to start from scratch and start a YouTube channel or, or a TikTok, how, what do you think is like the best approach? How, how do you make sure that you become successful with it? I think the main thing is like being consistent, whether that means I showed up daily, like I did not miss one day of posting for like basically a whole year, maybe one day out of like a month where I'd be like deathly hungover. <laughs> I wouldn't post, but like besides that, um, it's really just about showing up because not even for the people watching, but it's like showing up for yourself, like knowing that you can like commit to something every single day. Um, I think that because you get better, you get better when you do something over and over and over <laughs> again. Do you think that being in a place like Bali helps with being productive? No, <laughs> absolutely not. It's warm, it's sunny, it's beautiful. There's so much to do. Um, I meet very inspiring people for sure. I would love to know how they work in the heat because all I want to do is sit around and get dead here. But I also think it's, it's the best if you have a good work-life balance here. Any final advice or wisdom for, for the people? Enjoy yourself if it's, if it's something that you like. It's going to be work, but it's going to feel a lot more gratifying in the end because I genuinely do not feel like I work. Make sure you, you like what you're doing if you're going into a venture like this because they're also, it's just, it's going to take up all your time. <laughs> all right, so now we're at the Lost Creator House. This is a place made for creators and entrepreneurs and people who just want a place where they can come and work and meet like-minded people. I've actually been staying here for the past week and it's just incredible. There's a pool, a co-working space, a rooftop gym, and a lot of really cool people. So let's go talk to them. So Adam, 33, from Hungary, working on two, two things at the same time. One of them is that I'm a connector in the Web3 space connecting companies and projects with Web3 service providers to help them with their uh, market entry and uh, Web3 growth needs. And the other project that I'm working on, which just started a few months ago, it's called Bali Biohackers. Recently just renamed it to Limitless. This is an online biohacking community helping people to optimize their health uh, for more high quality and vibrant years. How did you get into those industries? So crypto, um, I heard about crypto in 2013 the first time fell asleep for a good seven years and then uh, I get involved again around like like late 2019 started investing then uh, went down the rabbit hole understood what the technology is going to enable us to do and I was like okay like this is something that I want to be a part of I quit my job I went all into crypto and NFTs and uh, this is also what kind of like set me free and I, I just get hooked. Like, I love the community aspect of it. I love uh, like we are actually innovating, we are changing things, and we are actually like, you know, freeing people from a system that may not be serving them super well. And into biohacking, I've been always interested in health and wellness and fitness in my entire life. And uh, last year I went through a pretty substantial transformation, both internally and externally. And I just decided to start putting all of my friends together in the same group you know, just to share insights, knowledge, information, tools, tips and tricks, debunking fake information that we come across on the internet. And, you know, just to have a, a more holistic approach towards health and how it is that we can optimize our health. So you said it was the money from, from crypto that kind of set you free and, and lets you live this lifestyle? It's, it's not just the money. So there are like two things, right? So w when we talk about like freedom, we can talk about like, financial freedom, location freedom, time freedom, yeah. but also like the freedom of the mind. So crypto was the one thing that like really opened my mind and really made me uh, educate myself on the current system, how things work and started to question things, right? I think this is uh, one of the biggest challenges nowadays that people don't really have like critical thinking and they don't question things. So the way crypto set me free is that I became the person who started to question things and, you know, started to find answers, what's actually behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, the financial aspect of that also made things so much easier for me just to, just to be a, a free man. And how did you learn everything about your industry? Did you go to school for economics or anything like that? No, like, um, I'm not a financial guy. Uh, of course, like, um, I have uh, a, a good financial literacy. Uh, I understand what's happening there. But uh, I'm not giving any kind of financial advice. I'm not a trader. I'm more like an investor in the space. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, you don't even have to go to school to learn these kind of things. I mean, they don't even think they teach it in school right now. <laughs> they don't teach you these kind of things because yeah. the moment you understand it, you know exactly how to play the game, right? And that's not in the interest of, you know, different kind of forces. Um, but again, like you can find everything that you need on the internet. You go on YouTube, you can take courses from people, trusted individuals uh, who can actually teach you the skills that, uh, that you need to learn. If you are like, uh, financially not in that position to buy these kind of courses, just you know, go on YouTube, go on Twitter, uh, hop onto some Discord channels, and you are going to learn a lot. At the beginning, when I got involved in crypto, I spent 13 hours every day just on Discord talking to people, understanding the culture, understanding what's happening, you know, like understanding the terminologies, the technology, how it works, all of that kind of stuff. And of course, you know, you make a lot of different kind of mistakes. You make some money, you lose some money, you make a lot of stupid mistakes as well. But again, like those are the lessons that are actually going to, you know, stick with you and you're not going to make those mistakes. And that's how you can actually level up and you can become someone who understands what they are doing in the space. Are you uh, comfortable sharing how much somebody could make in your industry? If you want to do a business similar to what I'm doing, yeah. uh, and you do a good job, and you have a good network, and that's what I was focusing on most of the time, then you can definitely make multiple six figures, if not seven figures, if you really, if you really, do, if you really do things well. Do you have any advice for anybody who is maybe watching this video and, and they want to maybe get into the crypto industry and move out here to beautiful Bali and become a digital nomad? Understand why you are doing it. It doesn't matter what I say and it doesn't matter what all of your friends say. You just need to know why you are doing the things that you are doing. There's always going to be something like super shiny and then you are just going to be jumping, jumping from shiny object to shiny object and you're never actually going to make it because you're always chasing the new thing. So... If you feel that crypto and Bali and this kind of lifestyle is something for the long, long run for you, go for it, you know, figure out the plan that how you can do it. Or if it just kind of like tickles your interest and, you know, like you just want to get it out of your system, you know, test it. Come here, check it out. Is this something for you or not for you? Then after that, you are going to be able to make a better educated decision. So again, like very similarly to everything, make a plan, execute, iterate. Right. And then once you are going through those kind of loops, you are going to know exactly what to do and if this is for you and uh, how you are going to make a living out of this thing if, if this is something that you want to focus on. My name is Julie. I'm about to turn 26 and I'm a photographer. How did you get into that? I started at the age of five. Um, I got a camera. My parents just gave me a camera because I, I needed to put my energy somewhere. So they thought photography would be a good thing and it just turned out to be my passion. So I got very lucky. How do you find clients as a photographer? Via Instagram. I use Instagram. So I just keep on sharing my work and use hashtags. And basically my clients usually find me via Instagram. They just look for a photographer or word of mouth is also. And are you like a specific type of photographer? Do you have a niche? Yeah, so I'm a self-love photographer, empowerment photographer. Uh, basically, I do photography for women and I help empower women through photography to help them like get comfortable in front of the camera, get over like their like get out of the comfort zone, feel more comfortable with their body, embrace who they are, or just have like a moment of self love for themselves. How long have you been a digital nomad for? Two years and a half. How long did it take you from starting photography to actually making a career out of it? I mean, I think like quick and not quick. I mean, find like I had clients like quite from the get-go, more or less. I mean, it was low at first, like only a few clients a month, but then it built up quite easily, I would say, like within six months. But then the financial part took a bit longer, more from the part that I took a while to set the right pricing. So I had the good amount of clients. I was like booked out every month. It was just like I didn't set out the right pricing to get financially free until later. How can somebody who's a brand new photographer grow and, and start making clients? Because it's a lot of people are becoming photographers. Is like people say like saturated mm -hmm. so how do you go from somebody who just like takes photos from fun to actually making a full-time income out of it I think networking like any other job I feel like networking is super important so I, w I started going to a lot of digital nomad meetups and at the time I used to be a branding photographer so also like 
entrepreneurs and digital nomads was kind of like a perfect place to find the kind of people I was looking for. And then just going to a lot of those networking events or going to retreats where I could meet people. So like going to places where you might find your clients and also just becoming friends. Like not everything becomes a client at first, but just trusting that like the time and effort you're putting into the first year will bring you clients mm -hmm. and doing portfolio work. And at the start, of course, if you don't have any portfolio, you need to do work for free. And just like finding people or niches or places, what of the places you want to do content. If you want to do food photography, reach out to restaurants to do content for free. If you want to do branding, reach out to entrepreneurs. You can like do something for free and just find a way to just build that portfolio with the right people that can then pass on your name to the right people. Do you think that being in Bali helps with being productive with work? Um, I think for me, I'm more productive outside of Bali. Last year when I came to Bali the first time, I actually kind of slowed down a bit on the business side, but I got to rediscover my whole artist side of myself and reconnect with that part and then get my creative juices to flow. So in that sense, it was productive. So it was maybe not productive in a business financial perspective, but in a perspective, more personal perspective of really reconnecting with my art that was extremely productive. In that sense, I feel like there's a lot more people, if you're creative, that you can connect with and work with. And at the same time, you can learn a lot from people. So you are productive just in other ways. I feel like it's maybe like certain projects can, it's harder to go fast forward because you meet a lot of interesting people. But all of those interesting people, you learn so much from them. You can learn something, you can collaborate, create a business together, find new ideas. And I think from that, over the next month, create new things. So I think although it's like slowing you down maybe on other levels, it's also up-leveling up you in many other ways. And are you comfortable sharing how much your business makes? Depends. I have months where I earn zero and I have months where I can earn 3K or more. So it really depends. Mm -hmm.